Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. This is going to be the A320 landing tutorial. That's right folks, we're finally going to teach us how to land this aircraft. Hopefully everything goes well for me. Um, it's hit and miss on the landings, I gotta tell you. I'm still getting used to that whole side stick thing. Um, I think I need to mess with my curves a little bit, but uh, anyway, we'll see what happens. As far as getting down to the runway, we shouldn't have any issues. Um, we're not going to bother too much with ATC today as I don't feel like dealing with the nonsense of up and down, up and down in um, very unrealistic manners. Uh, the last couple flights I've taken from Tucson to Los Angeles in this, uh, ATC has had me do some really strange things. Um, and the last one, uh, I was up at 32,000 feet and they took me all the way down to 20,000 feet and then back up to 30,000 feet. It's like, nah, that's not. And I know you can request higher, you know, altitudes and whatnot, but it's just it's not worth the, the hassle. So anyway. Um, by the way, also sorry, um, I am getting over a cold. It's part of why I've been uh, radio silent the last few days. Um, so uh, hopefully that doesn't uh, affect the recording too much. Um, I'll try to make sure to mute as uh, often as possible. All right, and uh, without further ado, let's go ahead and get rolling. We're going to do a quick takeoff. The aircraft's just about set up. Um, there isn't really a whole lot to do. We're still going through the alignment real quick, but as far as the FMC or the MCDU, we're just about ready to roll. So we'll go ahead and clear here. Um, if you've missed the first two videos or first three videos, I think it is now, uh, they will there will be links in the description below. Make sure that you guys uh, check that out. I also have the A320 guide now in its own playlist, so you guys can check that. Also, speaking of the A320 guide that we have been creating and working on here, um, it is nearing completion of the first phase, uh, meaning that it will get you from Tucson to Los Angeles International Airport. Um, it is uh, very basic still. Um, this is an ILS approach, um, you know, but uh, we have literally everything that I can pack into this thing so far. Um, that will get you there smooth. So at least the very least you'll have an under the basic understanding of the primary systems by the time that you uh, get to Los Angeles. Um, we have uh, I've been adding tons of information into it. It's got everything that I can possibly think of and as more stuff pops up I'm adding more and more into this. Um, we just got the takeoff section all broken down. I mean right down to give you guys an idea on how I've broken this down. I'm breaking down the screens by color and everything that I can think of to make this as easy as possible to read. Okay. Um, to that, there is a link to the Patreon site down below, guys. Um, you will need to subscribe to Patreon in order to download the guide. Um, I believe it's uh, $10 a month. Now, keep in mind, this is one of many guides I have planned. It will be the A320, the 747. I'm doing one for uh, VFR uh, flights, planning your flights and your gen gen blah, wow. general aviation aircraft. Um, start to finish, I'm doing a guide on the G1000. Since so many aircraft in MSFS are using it, I figured, you know what, let's break this thing down too. Um, got a bunch of different projects going. Uh, the A320 is the one that's closest to completion, but uh, I promise it's worth the subscription. Um, I'm going to make sure I keep uh, the content flowing and keep things as, as, as great as I can. Um, same thing with uh, DCS World, guys. I haven't forgot about you either. Um, if you're watching this, uh, DCS World, I'm going to ha be having some guides on the mission editor. Um, I know it's uh, pretty hard to find a really broken down guide that really breaks things down, so I'm working on it as well. I've uh, been working on it for a few weeks now. Um, so hopefully you guys enjoy. So uh, let's go ahead and get the aircraft set up and let's get out of here. All right. So as always, we're always going to check our systems here. Some of this stuff doesn't. Uh, so I auto-populated the flight plan. I put the flight plan in through um, the uh, simulator before I started the aircraft. But um, some of the other information still needs to be edited. So keep that in mind. Um, so we're still going to be doing a flaps one. We know our flex temp from previous videos is 64. Transition altitude in the United States is 18,000 feet. Now we can't set our V1s just yet. We still have some more initial information to throw in there. Cruise index or cost index is 20. Cruise altitude is 360 with a temperature of 45 according to our flight plan that we're building this around. Alternate airport is K Ontario. By the way, this is the latest build, 0.4 I think it is, of the A32NX mod. Um, I highly suggest you guys check it out. There's a ton of new features into it. It is absolutely amazing, right down to the color of the MCDU. Um, they, they're just blowing this thing away. Um, Zero fuel weight, we're going to go ahead and just use the auto-calculated and hope it's close enough today. Uh, block fuel is 
and boom look at that i mean just it looks great absolutely great you don't have to populate any of this information anymore it's just there um we can try this one i don't know if it's nope not yet so i don't know if you even need to um but uh, the only other one that we would need is a headwind and i don't know that we have to worry about it so we're just gonna keep on moving here all right so we've got the initial uh pages done flight plan is already complete as you can see here it's already there now we're going to go over back over to performance and calculate our v speeds and throw them in just give them a quick tap and tap again so we've got 143 on v2 so we're going to be looking at 153 up in the fcp so let's go up top so v2 plus 10 knots 153 went way past it let's bring that back down there we go all right, and we're going to set our initial altitude. We're going to go ahead and use 18,000 feet. Like I said, we're going to bypass ATC today to uh, make the video a little bit more fluid for us. Um, okay, so we already have our uh, altimeter set as 299 or 2 according to the current um, weather system in the game. I don't think that's right, but, you know, like I said, we're going to keep moving. So we have our alignment complete um, up top. Let's see here, batteries are on, fuel pumps are on, IRS is obviously on. We have no warning lights, no fault lights, APU's ready to go, beacons on. Let's go ahead and throw the strobe to on from auto. Um, altitude elevation, we're not going to have, or landing elevation is set to auto. We're not going to worry about that just yet. Um, uh, actually, it's not even implemented yet, so ah, never mind. All right, so let's go ahead and switch over to the APU. You can see we already have it available, so I'm just going to throw the APU bleed on. Monitoring from here, all right. Looks like all is well, no warning lights. Go ahead and kill the external power. Come back down, all right. Everything's still on and ready to go. Let's go ahead and double check our systems down here. We're gonna give ourselves our own squat code today of three, six, two, three. How about that, that sounds good. Let's throw that transponder on. TCAS will wait until we get moving down the runway. Uh, we can hit our engine master mode on over to ignition. Give the doors a quick lock. Radios are set. Auto brake we want for max for takeoff. And I think we are ready to get out of here. All right, let's go ahead and throw that up to 20. And let's contact the ground crew and tell them to get rid of this uh, jetway. Come on. There we go. All right, Jetway's out of here. We're going to go ahead and now do a pushback. Where's my pushback? Why am I not seeing pushback? Okay, really, dude? Ah, gosh, these guys. Ground services. Um, okay, that's interesting. I literally cannot request a pushback. It's not even an option. Power supply, baggage, catering, jetway connection. That's great. All right, I guess we'll request the IFR clearance. You want to bet it's going to make me do it? So let's do request IFR clearance. Uh, why is nothing working? All right, let's close and go back to the main menu. I've seen some of this goofy stuff before. Still won't give me a pushback, though. Tune ATIS. Let's tune ground. Let's try ground services. Ah, don't tell me we have a new bug. All right, so let's try. What is it? Shift P is the command for pushback. Hey, there he is. All right, fine. We'll make it work. Now let's go ahead and get back into the cockpit. All right, so pushback is starting. Remember I said nose wheel steering disengage once you get that up there on the uh, enunciator. Let's go ahead and release the parking brake. He won't actually tell us to. And now that he's doing that, we'll go ahead and start spooling up engine number two and wait for it to stabilize. See what happens when I bring that comm menu back up. See if I get uh, any of the pushback commands. There we go. All right, well, that's working now. Weird. Had to force it, but got it. Don't tell me what to do, buddy. All right, so go back to the showcase for a minute. Actually, let's use the external view so we can actually steer the camera. 
And we're using 1-1 one, one left again today, so we're going to steer to the right, down the right side of the aircraft. And that was actually probably a little premature, truth be told. So I'm going to tell him to go straight for a second. Let's go back in the cockpit, monitor those engines. Steel spooling. No worries there. That should be good. Let's have them start turning it. All right, let's jump into the cockpit. Engine number two is stable, throwing on engine one. And let's stop the pushback. Good enough, Chief. All right, this pushback is stopped. Let's hit that parking brake. Alright, we're going to simulate, yep, showed us the flag, okay, all the pins are removed, noseable steering is engaged. Let's go ahead and turn on that weather radar, predictive wind shear, get that T-cast going. Flight directors are set, autopilot set, auto thrust, we won't enable until we get down there. I didn't start the chronometers for the engine start, should have done that, shame on me. Uh, let's make that a little brighter there. All right, and I will adjust the daylight. Um, the sun will go down before we get rolling, so I'll end up shifting it back. That way we land in daylight. I won't I won't land at night the first time around um, for the sake of the video. All right, and other than that, I think we are good to go. We're just waiting on that second engine, 466, 465, all right, and we are good. All right, so let's go up top. Let's kill the APU bleed if I can hit the right button. APU bleeds down. Let's go ahead and kill the master switch. APU is off. All right. Once again, last quick check. Everything is golden. Flip that non-smoking sign on. I don't know if we can go for one more time. And let's chime the air crew. Let them know we're getting ready to get out of here. Let's get that nose wheel light up to taxi. And come back down in here. camera out a bit I don't have the um, track IR on today need to set flaps one for takeoff um, on the engine master mode I've seen two different documents okay so one of them says that it's uh, switched after takeoff one of them says it's switched before so this could be a company policy thing so it's really up to you guys when you switch this back to norm you can do it after your engines are stabilized or you can do it after takeoff I found two different variations so far um, so I'm not sure which one's correct. So we're going to go ahead and pull the and arm the speed brakes. That does seem to be unanimous. Um, and that is the event of a rejected takeoff. We need to stop the aircraft quickly. We obviously want to spoil the lift on the wings as well. All right. So with that being said, let's go ahead and unlock that parking brake and get rolling on out of here. All right, I decided to throw the head tracker on after all. Um, what is it doing, though? It's doing something very weird. Give me a second, guys. Something got messed up here with this thing. Happens to me every time I set it down. Literally every time. All right, are we good? No? Oh, you know what? I bet I know what happened. <sighs> Goodness gracious. All right, there we go sort of all right i'll live with it for now we'll deal with the rest of it later all right sorry about that i lied i had to fix the camera that was driving me nuts it was doing something very goofy all right it looks like we got it this time yep we did all right all right so now that i'm taxing at mach 4 
We're just going to go ahead and go straight for the lineup here. Get our lights on. Text light to take off. All right, and we're going to make this one short and sweet, so we're going to go ahead and tap the chronometer. Stabilize about 50. Close enough. Let's go into flex. Take off power set. Going about half forward on the stick. As you can see my little crosshair there moving up and down on the left screen. 80 knots, 100 knots centering the stick. Got V1 coming up there by the one dash there. Rotation speed on that triangle there. And rotate. Looks like positive rate. Coming up approximately three degrees per minute. about 15 degrees trying to stay on that uh, vertical horizontal lat nav line close to it now anywhere from 100 feet after takeoff to your discretion you can engage the autopilot so we'll go ahead and do so and it's going to pitch that nose down like a rock that's the terrain display I think we can turn that off for now actually alright so now we're accelerating once we reach the green S here, we've reached our uh, uh, flap speed. So we're going to go ahead and retract the flaps. So flaps coming up. Takeoff is complete. Let's go ahead and set the engines back to normal operation. Disengage the speed brake, spoilers, whatever you want to call them. Let's increase our range up to about 40 miles here. Now you can see that we're getting this flashing lever climb. That means we passed our um, thrust reduction altitude. If we go to, uh, is it initial B? Nope. It was the performance page, I think. Uh, let's go previous. Yeah, it won't let me show you. All right. So anyway, long story short, we're going to move the throttles back to climb. And you'll see thrust mode is in climb the nav mode is in climb or the autopilot mode is in climb and the blue altitude indicates that we are going up to our um, set altitude up here in the um, FCP Nice takeoff. Everything went well. Got a little steep on the pull there, but that's all right. I should have put the nose down before I engaged the autopilot like that, but it worked out. Seeing if we got anything new here that I haven't seen before. We're in the flight control page. All right, so you can see here we're holding at 10,000 feet. That's going to be because of a restriction here. So all of these have to be at or above, but we must have a 10,000 foot restriction here somewhere because it won't climb any higher than that at the moment. Which is interesting. This must be below. Hmm. I'm not sure why it held at 10,000 there based on our restrictions. Doesn't quite make sense. Although I didn't see that one there. That may have been the 10,000. That's all right. So these are all going to be above 8,100, above 11,000.
All right, and for you guys' reference here, while we're doing this, talk about the autopilot for a second. This little button here allows you to change the speed from Mach rating to actual speed in knots. This button here, if you go up on it, so you're pushing in, it puts it into the autopilot mode. So the autopilot is now going to control what speed we're cruising at. Okay, if we go down on it, so this is actually pulling it out. So think of the down arrow as you're pulling it, the up arrow there as you're pushing it, right? So if we pull it, it puts us into managed mode, okay? Whatever we set this to, this is what the aircraft's going to speed at. So if you watch it, watch this little triangle over here. As I roll it down, okay, the aircraft's going to start to slow down, all right? But, and then if I roll it back up, obviously the aircraft's going to start to accelerate. So anytime you see your speed like this, you're controlling the speed. So what you want to do here is we're going to push it in. And when you see the hash lines, the aircraft's controlling it based on our flight path and route and uh, any airspeed restrictions based on what we have planned. Okay, same thing with the heading. Okay, pull it like this. You go into heading mode. Now, it's not going to steer to 289 right off the bat. Okay, so like we can turn this all we want. Oh, disregard. I lied to you. I just lied to you. No, I didn't. Yes, I did. Okay, I thought we had to activate it over here. My bad. <laughs> Guess I mean, everyone learned something, right? So anyway, when you see the heading light come up here, you can rotate the aircraft and you can steer it here. This is how a lot of aircraft will do it when, uh, you know, you get the ATC saying, uh, you know, American Airlines 1233, make your heading, you know, 260. They'll just come up here and rotate this knob, okay, and, and set their heading. All right, and then again, hash lines, we go back to the flight path, okay? Autopilot 1, Autopilot 2, it's controlling the autopilot. There's two autopilot systems. Now, my understanding is I believe on certain landings with category, when you're doing an auto land, you'd want Autopilot 1 and Autopilot 2 both engaged. But I don't know that the auto land is actually working yet. Haven't gotten that far in the dock yet. Um, but that's something that obviously will go through. But I know you would want both engaged if you're doing an auto land, which is exactly what it sounds like. The aircraft can physically land itself. Okay. Um, but anyway, so Autopilot 1, obviously all the functionality you're seeing here, the autopilot, the computer will control speed, altitude, and heading. Okay, according to the programmed uh, uh, flight path and flight route in the flight management computer. Okay, and then you have your altitude designator. Obviously, you guys have seen this before, but it's the same thing. So if we click up on it here, okay, this is going to activate our altitude mode. So you can see here, you have this altitude with the asterisk, okay? That's the indication that's trying to catch an altitude. Now, you can see we're holding at 18,000 feet, okay, just under, which, by the way, since we're there, let's go ahead and do the same thing. If we pull it, remember I said the down arrows pull, and you can see right here it says pulls to standard, okay? We switch into standard mode. If we push the button, it goes back into barometric, okay? So let's go ahead and set, oops, I hit the wrong button. What I did there was you left click right behind here. You can switch between uh, hippopascals and barometric pressure. We want barometric and then go down for standard. <clears throat> anyway, the localizer is used to pick up the VOR navigation information. Now, the localizer will steer the aircraft horizontally, but will not um, acquire the glide slope on its own. Um, and now for altitude, for example, let's go ahead and scroll up here. Let's go up to 36,000 feet, which is our cruise for today. Now you can see that even though we've moved it, you can see flight level 360, that's our target. The aircraft's not doing anything. So again, like I told you, it seems to be a pattern here. If we click down arrow, you can see open climb. That's what the OPCLB stands for. And the aircraft will start to rise. Here we can see our ascent rate in thousands of feet per minute. So this is 1,000 feet per minute, cruising on up to 1,200 feet per minute. Got it? All right. And then if you click on the back end there, you can see that little knob rotating back and forth. This will allow it to scroll between hundreds of feet, or if we click again, thousands of feet. Okay? And then this will allow you to switch between metric and um, standard, which obviously we're going to keep it at standard for us. And then you have your vertical speed, which we'll take a look at a little bit later. But the vertical speed, same thing. Okay, it will allow us to control the ascent or descent rate in thousands of feet per minute okay and actually we can break it all the way down to hundreds in that situation but anyway that's a quick run by of the um autopilot panel it's really easy to use once you once you learn what does what um so from here on out guys we're just on our way up to the cruise altitude like i said i'm bypassing atc for today i'm not worried about them um so we're just going to go ahead and go all the way up to cruise and um let's see here if we take a look at our flight route let's go to plan here Let's bump that up to, let's see here, well, let's go back to 80, 
scroll through a little bit here. We're gonna look for the Hollywood. So right about between Hollywood and Bruin will be our top of descent. Okay, so that's about, when we get to about Hollywood, I'm going to go ahead and uh, restart the recording. And uh, we'll start walking through the descent and the approach all the way into Los Angeles International for an ILS 2.5 ride approach. I'll catch you guys in a bit. All right, guys, so we are approaching the Hollywood One or Hollywood Waypoint. And as you can see here, if you look at Bruin, you can see our flight level is about to change. Okay, we're going to be going down to 270 here. All right, so we're going to go ahead and start setting up our descent. So I'm going to do is uh, just bring this down to about 27,000 feet. And actually, we're going to take a look here. We're going to set her down to about 17,000 feet. And then once we reach Bruin, we're out to cruise mode. We'll see if she automatically starts descending here soon. She should go into a descent, but I'm not sure. No, it will not. Never mind. Disregard that. So all we're going to do here is, again, just like before, down arrow. So we're going to pull out on it. And you can see now we've gone into open descent, thrust levels, thrust levers are at idle, and we're still in nav and going for altitude capture, and that capture being flight level 170. Because we're about 80 miles out, as you can see here from LAX. LAX is just about two waypoints ahead of there, but uh, we want to be about 9,000 feet here at Lycum. Okay, so if we come down to Lycum here, you can see between nine and ten thousand. It's got two altitudes there. That means you have to be between nine and ten thousand. So we're going for nine thousand. And how we're going to reference that is if we pull up the ILS two five right approach plate. Here's Lycum right here, and you can see the altitude restriction nine thousand feet. Okay, so that's where we're going for. Up here on the ILS or on the um, approach plate, you can also see all your frequencies: the ATIS approach um, and departures. You can see your ground control. Um, SoCal approach. Here is our um, ILS frequency. And if we go ahead and go move this out of the way for a second. Oops. Wow, how did I do that? We can go ahead and tap the ILS button. The ILS is the LS button is not a nav mode. It just displays the ILS information. Now, unfortunately, it's not. We're nowhere close to that. I was hoping it would populate the information down below, but not yet. Not until it captures it. So I'll show you guys that again later. See, we're going to start descending here pretty quick. So now, for example, probably move this all the way down to 13,000 feet for Sivu. Uh, Well, it is right out the uh, descent at this point. Now, what we can do is come down to performance here. Let me reset this here. Oop, hello. Lock the camera here. And we can go to the activate approach phase. So we went performance, now activate approach phase, confirm approach phase. Now, here's all the information you would get from ATIS. Okay, now it's been default, it's been stuck, it's the same thing every freaking time still. So what we're going to do is we're going to do 299 or 2. 
you know what? Let me, I'll tell you what. Before I do that, let me check and see if I can get LAX to pop up on the airport list. Maybe we can capture it. No, back up. You know, we could try. Let's try tuning the IL or the ATIS 133.8. Let's see what we get. So I'm going to back up here a bit. Let's go to control six. There we go. And we're looking for what? Uh, 133.8. Let's see if this is right. Oops, hate that. I'm just monitoring the ATIS here. sound right these runways aren't correct I don't think it tuned like I wanted it to I hate how slow this is. Come on, man. Yeah, it's not working. All right, let's do this. Looks like we're still too far to get the uh, Los Angeles International. Anyway, so if we have to change it, we'll change it, but I don't think we're going to have to. So let's come down here to five here. And we're going to do a QNH 29902. The temperature is typically 13. Okay, magnetic headings are 259 at 3. I'm still affected by that. Transition altitude, I believe, is. It's going to be our transition 10,000 feet, I think, from Cebu. Cebu is our transition, so we'll do 10,000 feet. And we have our approach speed of 152 knots. All right. So now we can go ahead and come back up top here, see where we're at doing on our altitude here. So we're way above our target still. So this is going to be one of those times where we're going to use the autopilot to increase our rate of descent. So let's see here. Let me reset my camera here. There we go. All right. So what we're going to do here is we're going to come to the vertical speed and we're going to scroll it down to increase it. This is 2,900 feet per minute, 3,000 feet per minute. We're going to go down to... Uh, let's do 3,500 and see how that works. Pitch up for a second, then it should go down and do what we asked it. Oh, why aren't you doing it? Come on. There it goes. Now she's going down.
Well, it's still not descending the way I want it to, so let's do this going to manage speed. sure why this isn't working for me. Should be a pull out to get it to function. There it goes. I don't know why that was giving me so much trouble. Didn't do anything different. Anyway, all right. And you can see now that our altitude here, where it used to say altitude hold or altitude capture or open descent, now it shows vertical speed and it shows our descent rate. Okay, we're descending at 3,500 feet per minute. And that's just because we, we really got to get some altitude off this thing here pretty quick. And it may, may be monitoring constraints here, I'm not sure. The constraints are still a little weird. that down to 10,000. And we should be able to expedite the climb with that exped button, but I'm not sure that's actually functional yet. And we're below 17,000, so it's time to change our altimeter back to barometric, which in our case was the same. <clears throat> And 152 is our approach speed. Now, at Lycan, we're going to be about nine miles out. So at that point, we want to try to be configured by then. So as we're coming down the approach, let's bring the landing lights on, turn off light on, and for landing, we're going to put our nose wheel into taxi. All right, let's uh, bring the seatbelt lights back on and let the cabin crew know. Start our descent a little late. That's all right. <clears throat> all right, we're going to get an arm the speed brakes. We're going to be using low um, auto brake. We've got a very long runway we're coming in on. Oh, train's loading in. Haven't seen that one happen in a while. Take her down to eight thousand. And when we turn on the final approach at Lycum, we'll engage the localizer, the LS, and actually we may be able to get the LS frequency now. No, not quite yet, but we'll watch it. We'll go ahead and activate it. It is there. And you can see the same information, so that's uh, the ILS frequency 111.1. We go back to our approach plate, there it is right there. Um, the other thing we need, I just thought about, sorry guys, is we need to set our DME, or uh, decision height, excuse me, so 200 feet is our uh, decision height. So let's go back into the performance page for a second. And right here, we need to set the decision height of 200 feet. So we're going to throw that there. Or sorry, that's the minimums, excuse me. Decision height, I believe, is 100 feet. Let's 
Still about a thousand feet high on that. Turn the LS back off for now. And we're going to start reducing our speed to 200 knots. Make sure we go 190. At this point, just start slowing the aircraft down, getting it ready for uh, landing here. And the little dot next to everything indicates that you need to push the button to actually activate the command. So you can see now we're slowing. We've passed the little hash lines here so we can engage flaps one. Help slow us down a bit. We're at 10,000 feet now. Let's set our altitude for fault here at 5,000. Keep reducing our speed down to 180. Let's go ahead and bring the gear down. I know that is a little premature, we're a little high. Probably could have waited till about 3,000 feet to worry about the gear, but that's all right. <clears throat> I'm really sorry about this cold, guys. It's driving me nuts, too, if it makes you feel better. All right, sorry about the recording there. Had a little hiccup there. Hopefully we didn't lose too much. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch this over with a left click to hundreds. And we're going to take it down to 3,700 feet. Still slowing, 180. All right, so we caught up with our descent, so we're just going to hold still for a minute. Descend it a little quick. It's amazing how quickly you go from, you know, rapid to short, too much, too little, back and forth, back and forth. And that's something that, you know, anybody, you know, we're all going to learn with practice. Like I said, I'm no pro. That's why I'm making the guide is just as so much for my benefit as anybody else's. <clears throat> See if we can pick up that LS frequency yet. Not yet. Can activate the localizer. All right, so blue indicates that we're hunting for it. Not sure what all this lag is about all of a sudden. This is new. I haven't had any of this before. I'm not sure what's going on.
All right, so the ILS has been picked up now. Here's our uh, horizontal indication. And then we sh as soon as we get closer, once we pick up on the localizer there, that's locked up. So that's why we have the, the horizontal lock. Once we go into approach mode, we should get the uh, vertical guidance too. But you can see the uh, ILS name, frequency, distance to the source. And you can see here, ILS glide slope category one, runway 25 right. So it lets you know exactly where you're headed. That's good. Let's kick this down to 10 miles. And what we're looking for is to be at 3,000 feet right about the time that LAX shows up here. So we're going to go ahead and set ourselves here for 3,000. And at this point, we'll go ahead and drop the landing gear. Start reducing our speed. Go to 170 knots. Go ahead and go flaps 2 and 3 at this point. Got the runway out in sight. That's 25 right, right there. Now we're getting our vertical um, guidance here. So it's like we're a little below the glide slope. So we're just going to let that keep falling down. It's close enough. And now we can go ahead and engage the approach mode. And now you can see the glide slope is locked. And the aircraft will now descend all the way down to the glide slope. About 100 feet before the runway is when we'll disengage the autopilot and hopefully bring her down without making a fool out of myself. We're going to go ahead and go full flaps now. We're ready in full configuration. And we'll bring our approach speed down to 160 knots. And remember we're looking for 147 at touchdown. At this point, it's just walking the puppy home. So... Um, from here on out, guys, it's it's literally just letting the aircraft do its thing. It'll guide us all the way down. It's going to follow the glide slope in. Like I said, 100 feet before touchdowns, we'll all disengage the autopilot. After that, that's all skill, okay? That's when uh, it's up to the pilot in command to land the aircraft. So no judging my landings because <laughs> they are something uh, still left to be desired, that is for sure. But... Um, all the steps that I've given you will get you safely to your destination. As you can see, we are here in Los Angeles International. Um, but um, how well you succeed at the landing, oh, that's on you. Uh, I take no responsibility or credit for that. So let's go ahead and take a look at the outside view here. It's reduced to 155 knots. And we're just checking our final checklist here. A little enunciate here. Landing gear on. Gear down. Down. Three green. We're good. Uh, signs are on. Cabin is ready. Spoilers are armed. Flaps are at full. We are ready for landing. And what you're looking for is 30 feet, and you'll get a 30 feet call out. Um, 30 feet above the deck here is when you want to start your flare. And flare, I believe, is 3 or 7 degrees. 7 degrees, I think. There's 1,000 feet. So we'll come down to 150 knots.
and let's set our reference speed 147. All right, again, I take no responsibility for this, guys. No being Judgy McJudgersons and stuff. What? Oh my god, we also want auto brake on low. I thought I bumped it. I must have double tapped that. Gosh, I'm glad I caught that. We're using low because we have a very long runway and we're pretty light. All right, disengaging the autopilot, taking the aircraft. Zero throttle. Spoilers or reverse is armed. Reversers through 80 knots. Or 70 knots, excuse me. Reversers removed. Pressing on the brakes. All right, and I do believe you guys just witnessed the best landing I've ever done in this thing, so uh, hopefully it wasn't too embarrassing. We'll go ahead and clean up the aircraft, flaps up, make sure the spoilers are retracted. They are. And uh, we can go ahead and kill our landing lights, runway turnoff light, leave the taxi light on, and then from here you would simply taxi to one of your gates. So guys, I hope you've enjoyed this series so far. Um, that is the, uh, all that information that I just gave will be in the um, guide. Um, obviously the auto brake, um, I think what happened is I double tapped it. I did arm it um, earlier. Unfortunately, I think that was part of the video that cut out. Um, I just happened to look over and saw the light was off. So uh, make sure you set your auto brakes. I typically set my auto brakes at the same time I arm my spoilers. Okay, so quite a ways back, um, but uh, yeah. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed and learned something, and I will see you guys in the next one.